Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can perform programmatic navigation in Swift UI. Sometime back, actually close to a year back, I published a video called Setting Global Routing Using Navigation Stack in iOS 16. And in that video, I also showed you how to perform programmatic navigation, but started to think more about it in the video, which is one year old, I use environment object. And in this video, I'm going to try to use the environment value because I think the environment value might be a much better choice because environment object is usually used for the data, the actual data that either you want to display it on the screen or it will take part in you know, the view itself while the environment value can be used for services, routing, you know, and also navigation. So some sort of a service oriented thing. So that is why I'm trying to use environment value instead of environment object. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to come up with some sort of environment value, like the actual key name. And I'm just gonna take stuff from the uh, routing system for React and they call it navigate. So I'm also going to call it navigate. And I'm just gonna add all of this stuff in the same particular file, but you can create your different files. So I'll start with navigate environment key, because if you're creating an environment value, then you need to provide your own custom key because this is a custom value that we'll be providing. And now we need to provide that a default. So the default is a static property and we need to assign some sort of a default value over here. Now, it really depends that how you want to use the key. So it's always a good idea to start thinking about that how you're gonna be using the key. So this is how I want to use the key, which is kind of like very similar to how React does it. So I'm gonna go ahead and say environment. I mean, this is like the end result that I want, navigate private var navigate. And in React, all of these things are available by hooks, by the means of hooks. Now, obviously we're using Swift UI and not React. So we won't really be writing our hooks, which are simply functions anyways. I mean, you can think of it like a hook anyway, but this is going to be how it's gonna be used. All right, so we'll create the navigate and then maybe we'll have a vStack over here. And inside the vStack, we will say login screen because we want to go to the login screen. And then we will say navigate and we'll say login screen or just login. So this is how the end result should look like. And that's why you can see over here that we are calling the navigate, which is whatever the environment is returning you as a function. And we're passing in some sort of an enum, which consists of all the routes. So keep that in mind, the end result. So how can we create our navigate environment key now? Because we have to define some sort of a key and now we have to define the data type. So we're gonna say that, oh, well, it's gonna take a route and it's really not going to return anything. And we're gonna initialize it with a closure, which is kind of like empty. It's really not doing anything. So what is the route in this case? Well, route can be a simple enum. So route, which is hashable, and route can be, let's say, login. And we can add more routes later on, but right now we only have login, okay? The next thing after creating the environment key will be to extend the environment values so you can add the navigate key. I mean, you can simply add the navigate part of it, okay? So let's go ahead and add that extension. We're gonna say environment values and we will say navigate. So we're extending it and we are adding a new environment value called navigate. It is going to return you the route closure and now it's a getter and setter, we can provide that. So when we're getting, we're simply going to read the value of the environment values using the navigate key. So that will be the type. We're just gonna get that. And we, when we are setting the value, 
then we are going to set the value for that particular key. So self, basically type, and then the new value. Okay, so this is what we'll be doing. Let's go ahead and build it so that we know that it is working correctly or not. Okay, so it works correctly. And now if I go ahead and uncomment this, you can see that it kind of works correctly. See that? There we go. Let's go ahead and build it again. Great. So this is how it should look like. Now, the problem with this approach right now is that even though we have created a route, which is simply login, we have created the navigate environment key as well as the environment value. We are providing a navigate property, which is basically going to return a closure. We haven't really created our routes, meaning destination or the navigation destination and all that stuff. In order to do that, especially in the realm of the actual Xcode previews, I will have to go ahead and create some sort of a container preview because I want to inject the value of navigate. All right. So one option would be to simply create a container view just for the purpose of Xcode previews. So I'll say content and we will have to rewrite some of the stuff in our actual application on the start right here. Because all of the stuff that we are doing over here by creating this content view container view is only for the previews. This will be a view, var body, and this is simply going to go ahead and add a navigation stack, which is going to return the content view, okay? So now in the previews, we can simply go ahead and say content view, container view, so that we can at least see the previews. That's the whole point of creating the content view container, that we can see the preview. So everything looks fine. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a state. So I'll create a state, which is going to be keeping track of all the different routes. So it will be route like this. There we go, okay? And since we wanted to perform programmatic navigation, the navigation stack will have the path property, which will be binded to the routes itself. And the only way you can bind something to the navigation stack path property is so that the routes are hashable. And we can already see they are, okay? So that's good. And in this content view, because this is kind of like our root view, this is where we can go ahead and inject the environment key. So we'll go ahead and inject navigate. And the value of this, and this is the interesting part, because the value of the navigate is the actual closure. So we're just gonna go ahead and capture this closure. We'll get the route. And we can say routes.append and we will append a new value and we will add the route, all right? But we still need to provide the navigation destination. We're gonna check the navigation destination for the route. The destination in this case, we will get the route itself and it is this point that we will switch on the route and check for different cases. So if it's login, uh, we'll take the person back to the login screen or go to the login screen, whatever the login screen. So this is kind of like up to you. This is the actual view. So if you have a view called login view, you just put it right there, okay? And with this, let's go ahead and try to see if it actually runs or not. And there we go, pretty cool. So we can click on the login and it can go and take us to the login screen, great. But what about if we have more routes? And maybe we have a route that even take uh, an argument. So how would we get that particular route? Well, you'll just add a new case. And let's say that your route is, uh, you know, product or customer list or whatever you want to call it. So let's say your route is detail, right? and detail of a product. So you're gonna simply pass in the product. Now, what is a product? Well, 
product will be an actual entity which will have some sort of a name and you will also make sure that the product is hashable. So there we go, That's, we just added one more route to it. Since we added one more route, we have to go back to the navigation destination and we have to make sure that that particular route is also handled. So detail, we'll get the product and over here you can send it to the product detail screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a text, but this can be a product detail. Like I think eventually you should have like something like this, product detail view where you can pass in the product, something like that. That's fine, okay? Now, in order to trigger this particular route, which is detail, I'm going to go ahead and add another button and I will say product detail and I will say navigate and going to where? Detail for a particular product. So whatever the product is, let's say a chair. Now login takes you to login, product detail take you to the chair. So we already have our programmatic navigation working correctly and you can go ahead and add more different routes to it if you want to. Now, all of this stuff works correctly in the Xcode previews, but if I run my application right now in, in an actual iPhone or in the simulator, it's not going to work. And the reason that it's not going to work is that in our main file, which is the app file, we haven't really configured the navigation stack. We have not configured the navigation destination or even the route. So nothing is going to work. So if I run the app and it runs on the simulator and I click around on the login or the detail or the product screen, whatever, nothing is gonna work. So all of the stuff that we have done in the content view container view or the container view itself, we have to do it in our app file over here or else it's not gonna work, okay? Let's go ahead and say login. So you can already see that nothing is working over here. And the weird part is that, um, that it's returning, it's creating the content view. Let's go to the content view. But for some reason, it didn't display the product detail, which is kind of weird, okay? But let's go ahead and see then how we can first make sure that everything is correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this routes into the, over here. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the navigation stack with the content view. For this, we will have the path, which will be routes, that's fine. And going back to the content view, going back to the content view container view, we're gonna to try to inject these things. Actually, we can just copy kind of like the whole thing over here that we need to inject it to our content view. There we go. Making sure everything is aligned correctly. So now at least we are injecting everything in our learn app file and we're injecting it to the root. And the root in this case is the content view. So let's try to run this again and go to the login screen, we can go to the login, go to the product detail, we can go to the product detail. So you can see all of these things are working. Great. So there you have it. We have created programmatic navigation in Swift UI. And this time we actually use the environment values rather than the environment object. And the reason that we use environment values is environment values are good for when you have more of a thing that's the value itself is not the data. It's either a service, HTTP client, router, you know, some sort of a error display thing, some sort of a setting, these kind of things. An environment object would be good if you have some data and you want to share that data for the rest of your application, maybe probably with views that are very deep into the hierarchy. All right, so in this case, we don't really have any data we have kind of like a service which allows us to do navigation. So this will be a good 
point to use environment values instead of the environment object. And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Hey, if you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses on iOS development. As you can see, I have courses on building augmented reality apps using Reality Kit. I have uh, courses on SIF UI as well as MVVM design pattern for UI Kit, Async and Await, and building reminders clone. I have a lot of different courses that you can enjoy. So check out the link to all my courses and thank you so much for your continuous support.